have our guests with us today, um, Governor and Commissioner of Education. We had a fantastic conversation regarding education, regarding our programs here at the school, and we're looking forward to his presentation. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Gregory Atkins. <clears throat> And I want to thank everyone for being here today. This has been quite an honor and a privilege for this school district. Uh, we're really proud of, of our many accomplishments as a district, so it's a real honor to have the governor here and the first lady, the commissioner of education, and members of our local delegation. Uh, we are proud of the fact that we have had the highest graduation rate that we have seen in Lee County history. Uh, that we are preparing kids for college and career at an increasing rate. And I'm just, uh, again, very privileged that we have these fine folks here to be a part of this and to be the host of the governor and as he prepares to give his announcement. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to the Commissioner of Education, Commissioner Corcoran. And it's an uh, honor to be here with you. It's an honor to visit with the school, visit with the students. Uh, it's also great to have our uh, leader, Dane Eagle, and Ray Rodriguez, who I've served with uh, these guys for six years back when I was in the legislature, and great champions of uh, leg uh, great con uh, conservative, uh, principle-based uh, education legislation. And so it's great to have these guys here. And, and it's great to be here today for this announcement uh, that the governor is going to make. I say to everybody, uh, I started tweeting it, that we have the boldest number one education governor in the entire United States of America. Hooray! Woo! Woo the time they talk about getting jobs, I say, here's my two criteria for getting a job. Is one, is go where the action is. And, and as having someone who accepted a job with this governor, this guy is nonstop action 24 hours a day. <laughs> uh, and then the second thing is go and work for someone that you believe in. And it's so great to be able to serve on a daily basis with a governor mm -hmm. who has a solid, principle, constitutional-based, uh, philosophical belief in what makes America great and is passionate about teaching the heck out of our school children so that they can grow up and be great citizens, have great careers and great vocations down the road. Uh, and today I think uh, you're going to hear one of the boldest uh, executive orders ever. We've been stuck, uh, as many of you know, for a long time now with Common Core. Then we rebrand it. We call it Florida Sunshine State Standard. It's all the same. It's all the same. It all needs to be looked at. It all needs to be scrutinized. And we need to sit down with the experts, the stakeholders, great superintendents, great leaders in the community, and figure out how do we write the best number one standards in the United States of America. And this governor is about to uh, lay that out. I'm probably stealing this. <laughs> Without further ado, uh, and it's, honestly, I want one other thing. It's uh, great also, if you guys, uh, I, she doesn't make it out to every, every event, but the first lady, uh, the events that she comes out to with regularity is when she gets to come to a school, uh, meet with students, and encourage them to go forth and to prosper wildly. And so it's great to also have with us today uh, the First Lady, Casey DeSantis. But with that, I give you our great governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Commissioner, and I really appreciate being at the school. I'm very impressed with what is going on, uh, the students. Uh, it's really amazing some of the programs that we have that I, when I was in Florida public schools, we did not have these things. And so um, I want to commend the superintendent. I want to commend the principal and I uh, want to commend the teachers because I think this is, uh, this is good stuff. So one of the things that we would constantly hear about uh, on the campaign trail is a frustration with a lot of parents in particular with this idea of common core and some of the testing and some of the things that go into that. And, and it's called Florida Standards. Um, today we are doing um, an executive order um, that is going to instruct uh, Commissioner Corcoran um, to get to work uh, and come up with good standards for the state of Florida, which will include uh, eliminating Common Core and the vestiges of Common Core. Yay! Uh, Talk to teachers, talk to parents, listen to their experiences, 
Uh, I had a lot of parents who were very frustrated because they didn't understand some of the math and some of these things. So, look, let's just try to get this right. We want to be very high quality. Uh, we want to demand excellence, uh, but I think we want to do that in a way that's responsive to some of the concerns that we've had um, over uh, the many number of years. And so uh, the executive order uh, will require the commissioner to provide a roadmap uh, so that we have authentic uh, Florida-based uh, standards. Um, uh, he's also going to tell us how we can increase the quality of, of our instructional curriculum. Uh, he's going to suggest innovative ways to uh, streamline some of the testing and to make that so that it's something that is measuring success, but we're not just teaching uh, to a test. Um, and then something that's really, really important to me is um, uh, identifying ways uh, so that we can really make uh, civics education a yes. priority in yes. Florida. Uh, yes. Yes. Executive order, some of the Florida statutes, including the, the requirement for middle schoolers and the tests, and I think that's great. Um, but I think when people graduate uh, from a Florida high school, and I think some of the students here, you know, are probably um, you know very good in this regard. But I don't think it's true statewide. You know, you really need to understand uh, what makes America the country it is. Um, you know, we're not a country that where everyone has the same religious denomination, where everyone has the same ethnic heritage. What unites us, or what's supposed to, is the idea and certain principles that the country was founded on, that you see reflected in the Constitution, that have really been the focal points for a lot of the great debates we've had in the country's history. And I think it's important that when we're sending some of these students out, um, that they're not only prepared for a career or prepared for higher education, uh, but they're prepared to discharge the duties of citizenship and so uh, civics education was something that I that I promised during the campaign and I think as we go to um, you know with rewriting and figuring out what we need to do for standards um, and moving away from things like Common Core I think that uh, having civics education be a more central part in that um, is something that's very very important to me and I think quite frankly it'll pay dividends uh, for us far into the future because you, know, you can prepare people for uh, a good job, uh, but if we don't have folks that understand, you know, what it means to be an American, are passionate about being citizens, you know, that really undergirds everything else that we see, whether it's economy or all these other things. So I think it's really, really important. Um, and then the final component is that we do believe um, that we need to increase Florida standing in terms of literacy generally uh, with, with our students, and so we're going to be working hard on that. So I think that this is a chance. Uh, for us to really lead the way, uh, but it's also an opportunity for Floridians to provide input to the commissioner, and, 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 and we want to hear from you uh, because I think we want to do this right. This is not going to be something that is going to be dictated by the federal government. Uh, it's going to be something that is going to spring up from the communities here in the state of Florida. So uh, I'm here to say when, when, you, when you complained about Common Core, I hear you. I told you I'd do something about it. Uh, and today we are acting to bring those promises right. into a reality. Um, because as parents, um, you know, Casey and I are concerned about, I mean, our kids are, 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 are too young to be in school yet, but uh, this is something that is, you know, I think we're more passionate about now that we're parents than maybe, you know, we were five, six years ago. And so I want to give her an opportunity to say a few things and then I'll, I'll close it out. Mm -hmm. well, that, well, that is very hard to follow up upon. <laughs> <laughs> say this, I, I could not be more proud of what Ron is doing for the state. And when people were wondering during the campaign, you know, is he going to be working hard? Is he going to be doing and delivering on those promises? And I think that we've seen since he's been in office, however many weeks, that he's working hard and he's listening to what the voters want. Yes. Yes. Young children, Madison and Mason. Madison, by the way, is two years old, and she is very opinionated. For me to say that. <laughs> Ten months old, Mason. You know, and I'm a product of the public school system, and making sure that our children have a good foundation and a good education, of course, is crucial for us and for parents all across the state. And after all, I would say is that our children are our biggest investment in our future. And when we find that the ways in which we're doing things and are educating our children not really bearing fruit in the way that we think that it should, it's really incumbent on, on us to make sure that we're getting it right, not only for our children, but of course for the future of the state. 
And so, you know, Ron talked about the civics education. That's so important that they need to understand the unique principles in which this nation was founded. And, you know, if they want to live the American dream, they need to understand the American dream. Mm -hmm. They have to appreciate it. Yeah. Amen. For sure. Very excited. I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be married to a great governor, uh, the mother to two beautiful kids, and I'm excited for Florida's children going forward. So thank you guys. So we're, we're happy to be here uh, and to make this announcement. This is the second education announcement we've made this week. Uh, yesterday we were in Tampa to do a really path-breaking announcement about career and technical education uh, you actually see it, it, it here you see it in spots around the state we want to bring these types of programs uh, statewide so that folks are graduating uh, high school with an industry certification uh, like they do uh, here uh, we want to see that that standard and we want to have a a nimble education system that is constantly looking working with the community working with businesses responding to what some of the needs of the economy may be, uh, conscious about how the economy may be changing so that our students are always put in the best position uh, as possible uh, to succeed. I mean, things have changed a lot since when I was coming through the school system, but I think the pace of change that, that we've seen since I was a kid has been significant, but I think it's gonna be much more significant going forward. I think we're in, a, in an era of, of constant upheaval and we just need to be uh, uh, able to respond to that and I think we will. So that was in a very important piece. Um, you're looking at real significant investment in, in training teachers uh, to be able to instruct in things like computer science. I know we have uh, that is being done in Lee County. Uh, I think there's an appetite to do it in other places. Uh, we don't necessarily have all the training in place so we're putting real dollars into that uh, we're also doing some innovative things like you know folks who get some college but then don't get that bachelor's degree you know we want to be able to kind of reverse credential that so that you know if they have enough credits for an associate's degree at UF but just can't get through at least give them get them the associate's degree so they can go out um, and start to be productive and then we want to also do a new program for what we're calling the last mile completion you have some people that get pretty close to getting that degree and then for whatever reason, I mean, things happen in life. They don't quite get over the hump. Uh, we want to provide financial incentive that if you're over 90% of the way there, uh, that we can link you up with the appropriate courses so that you can get that degree um, and, and, and move on to be more productive. So I think we're doing We're going to be doing an awful lot. We're going to be rolling out more stuff next week uh, with regards to education that I think will be exciting for a lot of folks. And so, look, at the end of the day, you know, we're working hard because I think that the harder we work, uh, the more we can do for Floridians. And so I'm happy to be here uh, for this announcement. I'm proud of our announcement yesterday, and I look forward to making some more announcements next week. Uh, so with that, I'll Governor, take some questions. How soon will it be eliminated, and how quickly would you like to see something in its place? So this is going to be a process that is going to take the balance of this year, and then we will go to the legislature next session and, and want to get that done. So uh, we... Uh, we, we don't want to dilly dally, but at the same time, we want to do it right. And uh, you know, we could have just tried to dictate something on high, but I think it's definitely worth having Richard get into the communities, listen to people, so that we get something that a lot of people have confidence in. Yes, sir. Uh, are you working with vocational uh, schools and education for crash trades? Absolutely. Yeah, we are. I mean, look, uh, you you look. So we were at the at the. At the uh, it's a technical high school in Tampa yesterday, and I was talking to a young fella who uh, is, he had, a, he had a, a cool, I mean, it's like the school logo that had welding program. So he's in the welding program, and he said he's already been offered jobs for welding, and he's 16. He's like, I can't take them. But what will happen is when he's a senior, once he gets to be 18, uh, he will actually be able to do the last two periods, leave school early to go work. And he'll be able to make money, and he'll have a job, a full-time job waiting for him. And the interesting thing is, is even as they're giving them those requirements or giving them those opportunities, and even though this guy was in a welding program, he was also taking AP classes at the same time. So the idea that, you know, people say, oh, it's just like Europe, you've got to choose vocation or that. No, you actually can do both yeah. um, and then figure out what, what opportunities are there for you and make those decisions. And so I think that's the way it needs to be. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what kind of 
federal funding will the state lose by eliminating Common Core? I don't think we're going to lose any. I mean, the president is opposed to Common Core, um, and I think our standards uh, will be much higher in many respects, but I think it'll be uh, standards that are more reflective of what the folks are looking for, and I think it'll be more geared towards um, you know knowledge uh, rather than just maybe teaching to a test. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, what concerns were you hearing from parents and voters about Common Core that led you to make this decision? To move well, on? I think there was a concern about they felt that it had been imposed federally, whereas they are protective of wanting to have these decisions made locally, and that's just apart from the substance of it. But then also you would have situations where uh, parents did not like some of the curriculum. Maybe they had trouble even doing basic math to help their kids. And my thing is, is like, look, if, if that's something that is being put in and it's not being received well by the parents, I mean, we need to have a system that, that's flexible enough to understand that. Um, so, you know, there were a lot of different things, I think, that people said. And part of it is when you go through the process the right way, even if people don't agree with everything that we end up doing, at least they'll feel like they were listened to. And I think with Common Core, a lot of people just didn't feel like anyone was listening to them. And I think that's a big, big problem. Yes, yes sir. It appears to me from the study I've done on the subject that literally every public school in the state chooses books from the Florida Department of Education to prove it is. Will that be opened up so they can pick any books they choose? Well, I don't know if it's going to be any books you choose, but in the executive order, uh, there's a requirement to make sure that our curriculum is up to snuff. And so, you know, we're going to be, uh, Richard's going to be looking at that and making sure that, you know, particularly when you have things like um, American history, American civics, um, you know, I really want to have an, an apolitical curriculum. Uh, I don't want this to where we're trying to smuggle in, you know, kind of modern day partisan politics. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is about. Um, and to the extent that's been done, where I have people have shown me examples of that. I don't know necessarily if it was in Florida, but they've showed showed me textbook examples. Um, you know, we obviously want to steer clear for, from that. And so, so that is going to be uh, something that that, that we're going to look at. And, and obviously, we want to have input from the public on that. One last question. Yes, ma'am. Do you have plans to get rid of the high stakes testing or the punitive results of those? So he, in the, in, the, um, in the executive order, um, yeah, we're requiring an examination of, of how the testing is being done um, and, 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 and a directive to you know, make sure this is streamlined. Um, didn't, didn't say to get rid of any testing, but right. doing it in a way that I think is, um, is, is trying to mm -hmm. measure uh, where we're at. Um, but we don't want to get in a situation where you know, the test is everything um, and yet you're really teaching to a test. You know, this should be something where you know, students just have the knowledge. You can test them tomorrow or two weeks from now and, and, and they wouldn't have to study for it because they would just know it. That is the type of knowledge I think that really carries with students more. And I just found that you know, anytime I, you know, just, if I just cram for a test, take the test, I forget you know, what I learned pretty much. So we don't want to do that. But that'll be, a because I know people have concerns about the testing. Well, this is the opportunity for people to have their voices heard. And I know, uh, I know Richard is going to be working very hard uh, to develop um, you know, a good approach in that respect. So it's like, I think at the end of this, I think what we can come up with is um, really putting Florida at the forefront. I mean, we're going to, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to demand excellence, um, but, you know, we're going to do it in a way I think that's been responsive to a lot of the, a lot of the concerns that folks have. So, so thank you all for coming out and uh, there'll be more announcements.